Hello, this is Richard Outram, and welcome to the Prepare for Growth podcast series. Bite-sized wisdom for leadership and personal development. So thank you for taking time out to join me. I'm so grateful for this unique opportunity. And this week's podcast is Leadership Lessons from Hitsville, USA. I had the pleasure of watching this superb two-hour documentary, Hitsville, The Making of Motown, for the third time, each with equal engagement and a heartwarming feeling for me. The special was a wonderful biography of this iconic entertainment company that for decades touched hearts of fans around the world. My family grew up listening to the Motown soul sounds since the late 1960s, as the visibility and popularity of the recordings accelerated through mainstream media. Legendary artists such as Smokey Robinson, Dinah Ross and the Supremes, The Temptations, Marvin Gaye, The Jackson Five, Stevie Wonder, The Isley Brothers and The Four Tops sang distinctive signature sounds which touched a deeper chord in our being. The mixtures of love ballads, pop, R&B and funk music became a worldwide phenomenon adored by millions of fans. The star-studded stable also boasted immensely talented songwriters who would become some of the most celebrated in all genres of music, making the Motown sound one of the most renowned, groundbreaking record labels in modern American history. But the compelling story of the rise of the business of Motown started with very humble roots brought to life by a visionary leader and founder, Barry Gordy. I was in awe at the business lessons which are as relevant today as the past 50 years that I had my two sons watch and learn the fundamentals of building a great and enduring business. Gordy was an entrepreneur at a young age as he started a newspaper round in black neighborhoods and then started a small record store selling blues and jazz offerings that appealed to him and which he assumed would also appeal to the buying public. Unfortunately, both businesses busted, but he learned the valuable lesson being that the right customer is always right. His personal love for the blues and jazz themes were resonated by the simplicity and feel-good tones of the music. Even though the store went bankrupt, as a neighborhood did not share the same love for this musical genre, the seeds were being sown for this visionary to realize his dream of bringing feel-good music to the masses. A pivotal point in his life occurred when working at a Detroit car factory assembly line, where he learned the production systems and processes. Businesses need the right balance of structure and entrepreneurial spirit to innovate, scale and grow. At the same time, Detroit was undergoing immense change as the car capital of the world and now was attracting droves of new talent which elevated the vocational, educational and entertainment requirements of the city boom. External forces intersected to provide the perfect timing for Gordy to realise his entrepreneurial potential. And so he started Motown Records in a small building with a tiny makeshift recording studio. There are a number of major business growth lessons from Barry Gordy that particularly resonated with me over my 35 year business career. Overcoming founder syndrome, cultivating the self-awareness to know when to let go, trust, delegate, and hire the right talent to grow the business during different life cycle phases. I hadn't been aware of the huge impact that Gordy's best friend, Smokey Robinson, had on the growth of Motown. Immensely gifted, Smokey was the first artist hired by Gordy and he quickly demonstrated his genius ability to write and sing songs, which in collaboration with Gordy would become the signature feel-good sound of Motown. Gordy instinctively knew how to make the music pop, but being surrounded by far more talented artists such as Smokey, he quickly realised that as CEO, his role was to be the steward of the Motown culture and also finding and signing the best talent and develop artists to unlock their true potential. His ability to curb his ego, demonstrate humility, cultivate self-awareness and complement his skills with better talent in certain areas of the business was a true testament to his leadership. Gordy built an inclusive culture and safe environment to speak the truth at all times and demanded honest and constructive discussion, particularly in the quality control aspects of the recordings. He encouraged healthy competition among artists and producers, which would naturally breed champions. 
But here's the difference when competition becomes unhealthy and possibly political. Gordy instilled the highest value of his company and artists around love for one another and the company's purpose, wherein competition can't get in the way of love. Love for one another and love for the greater good of Motown. He would relentlessly reinforce the values of integrity, unity and love in daily rituals with his team. His actions set the example of living those values, including tough calls when these institutional agreements were violated. In Gordy's words, love means building people when they don't see it. What a beautiful definition of leadership. Gordy hired for a diverse organizational makeup. Motown was not a black company, but rather an intentional melting pot of racial and gender diversity. Gordy encouraged different perspectives, which helped keep the company adaptable and fresh as a sound of young America. His executive team comprised a healthy representation of women with such diversity was ahead of its time as we grapple with such gender issues 50 years later. The encouragement to voice, listen and wrestle with diverse opinions as part of the decision-making process was key to such successful engagement and alignment. The story of Motown's success was not without serious challenges at the time of the civil rights movement. As the sounds became more popular, record distribution and artist touring was cloaked with the dark veil of racism and segregation. Some of the artists faced such fear and horror for the first time in their lives, which affected their will and motivation to continue with the label. Emotional integration, as Gordy puts it, was key to enlist the support of each other while reinforcing the values and higher purpose of the company. He led the company with grit, intention and courage to push through these discriminative challenges as the label built a market and became more visible to the nation. The long-awaited breakthrough for the company occurred when the Supremes appeared on the popular mainstream Ed Sullivan show. The exposure made black chic and set the label on a meteoric growth path. Gordy knew that he needed to instill and develop inner confidence in his artists to perform on a broader platform and the world stage. Etiquette training and professional choreographers were hired to elevate performance standards within the company and help social acceptance across new audiences and media. He was demanding the highest performance of his talent and setting the platform for the next phase of the company's growth. The ensuing cycles of success meant that Gordy was to transcend the production line mindset. The company had to adapt and become more agile as social and political forces were changing and influencing the external environment. He recognized the adage that what got the business here would not get it there. The operating system had to change. His talent pool needed freedom without restriction. People were not cars and needed to express themselves outside the system. This was tough personal evolution for Gordy as the founder and CEO of the company. He built the company on basic principles of feel-good music and stayed out of political boundaries and world affairs. Marvin Gaye pushed Gordy beyond his comfort zone to accept that the worldview was changing and that he could not be stuck on ideas that didn't make contemporary sense. Gordy eventually succumbed to shifting his mindset and adapting a new creative landscapes, which wouldn't necessarily align with the safe and wholesome messages of the original Motown sound, but perhaps using influential songs to affect change in the world. The next big growth step came as Gordy continued to foster innovation. He pushed the envelope further as the label became a global phenomenon. The company had likely outgrown Detroit as well as confining itself to record label status. Innovate or stagnate, as Gordy says. The entertainment industry was a broader and larger category and Gordy saw great adjacent opportunity in the movie business. Against the council of founding members such as Smokey, who believed in sticking with the founding mission, Gordy decided to move the company to Los Angeles. His grand vision was a larger media platform to make the world understand Motown music. The Motown label continued to flourish throughout the 1980s to present day. Legendary artists such as Lionel Richie's Boys to Men, Michael McDonald, Tony Braxton, to name a few, have carried the Motown baton and added to the list of blockbuster chart toppers and awards. The documentary ended with Gordy and Smokey Robinson reciting a daily rally cry at the Motown offices 
in which all staff would participate. The simple words spelled love, unity and excitement for what they were building. It brought the teams together in what Gaudi would describe as Motown being a divine movement. There are no better words to describe his vision to life and energized through a greater cause that brought happiness to fans around the world. Barry Gordy and the Motown story is a brilliant case study on how to build a great and sustainable business. The culture built on love and unity resounded in the artist's performances and their recordings. Gordy's special gift, however, was finding and signing great talent, developing them to their full potential, and then allowing them the space to flourish. Humility and self-awareness were possibly his greatest leadership traits. Thank you, Barry Gordy, and all the artists of Motown Records for the journey and for beautiful memories that still touch our hearts and souls today. I hope that you found today's session valuable. If so, please follow me on Instagram at outram.richard and post your comments. Thank you again. Until the next podcast.